This is my home screen. And yep, it's pretty empty. Now, I'm someone who generally doesn't like clutter in their devices, especially since I started setting up my devices with a sort of minimal design. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, our iPads, our phones, or whatever, they're just tools. Whenever I open my iPad, I want to make sure that I have a specific purpose rather than just opening it and letting my iPad dictate whatever I do on it. So instead of having multiple apps on my general home screen, I just have four leading apps that I use for this iPad 4. This moves me to my point of why I'm using this iPad in the first place. And I just mainly use it for school. I do use it for work here and there and for some creative endeavors, but it's not something that I very use often in my daily life. Like literally my app library is empty. It just has a couple of essential apps and I'm not someone who needs a lot of apps just to go through my life. Like I said, I just treat my iPad like a tool. Now, that being said, I couldn't help myself but make it look pretty at least. Now, as you guys know, I have a thing for the dark minimal aesthetic. Pretty much everything that I have from devices to clothes or bags, it's literally all black. Now, while I am trying to graduate from this color scheme, still when it comes to my devices, I generally want them monochrome as I find it very nice and very clean. Even most of my wallpapers are monochrome and minimal. But before we move on to my lock screen, let's talk about my current iPad setup. So currently I'm rocking the iPad Air 5, and I think I mentioned this a lot in my videos, but I got this way back in Thailand a couple years ago, and it's been holding quite well until now. Although I'm a very light user, I'm not someone who uses the tablet all the time, so maybe it plays a factor to why it lasts long until now. But so far, it hasn't had any problems, and I had a pleasant experience with it. A lot of people ask what pen I'm using, and it's a pen from Gujadoc or it's a fake pen rather. I didn't bother buying the real Apple Pen or your Apple Pen Pro because it was just so freaking expensive and I didn't really need the fancy features. Now, another bonus about this off-brand Apple Pen is it's black, so it matches my aesthetic. Now, the thing is, I'm not a big time artist. I'm just a normal student and a content creator, so I don't really draw or make illustrations, but I do make simple drawings and prototypes from time to time. And sometimes I do take notes on good notes or I make drawings on Figma. But other than that, I'm not someone who necessarily needs the features of an Apple Pen Pro. The Gujadoc Pen is just sufficient for me and it's been so helpful and it's so much cheaper as well. It charges like a regular Apple Pen, you just snap it onto the side and it will start charging. Alright, moving on to the lock screen now. I know you guys are expecting me to include X widget or Y widget, but no. I just kept it empty and I lick it clean and it's just showing my wallpaper. Now the wallpaper that I'm using is a wallpaper that I made a couple of months ago and it's a custom wallpaper that I made for pretty much my ecosystem of devices and I just think that it's a very cute minimal wallpaper and that it adds a lot of character to my devices. So I just ended up using this and I really like it. Especially the doodles and the smiles because they just give me the little joys in life because you know, I have a joyless life. However, let's do talk about the clock setup that I have. Now obviously we have the clock here but we also have this little widget that I have from Akiflow. You can just use your Google Calendar as well for this. It can show me your main schedule that's happening during the time. I just find it a very useful widget and I recommend everyone to use that. And yeah, I guess I'm kind of someone who needs to know what exactly is happening at the current time. So that's why I recommend that simple Google Calendar widget or any calendar widget. All right, enough blabbering. Let's move on to my home screen. Yes, you're looking at it correctly. There is literally nothing on it. Just a couple apps on the dock. Now, like I said, I don't like having an array of apps shown to me when I open my device because typically when I'm already opening my phone or my iPad, I already know what I'm going to be opening. So whenever I reach out for my iPad or my phone, having a list of apps doesn't really matter when I already know what I'm going to be opening. Now, unfortunately, iOS doesn't allow you to remove the dock for some reason because Apple sucks at customization. So I just ended up using the four most used apps that I use on my day-to-day -day life as a student, which is Obsidian, Notion, GoodNotes, and Google Classroom. So I've been left on my iPad, we have this little page, I don't freaking know what you call this, freaking, I don't know, widget center or something. I just have three widgets on there, my Google Gmail widget, my battery widget, and my AccuFlow calendar. Like I said, I'm not someone who likes clutter, and typically widgets are just there to show information, so I just keep what's useful to me. That's why I have these three. I said in such a Filipino accent. Then swiping down on the control center, I reduced it so that it just had the essentials, so we have my connections, Wi-Fi, brightness, volume, orientation, airdrop, and finally, focus mode. And this is where the magic happens. 
Now, you may be watching this and thinking, Can I hear fucking click bait at us? We see widgets everywhere on your home screen thumbnail, but you don't have anything on your home screen in the video. And well, the simple answer is because we're just in a different screen. Once I open my focus mode and I turn on study mode, bada bing bada boom, the screen changes and it is ready for studying. Now I got this inspiration from Better Creativity. He has an excellent video about his iPad setup, so I do recommend checking it out. Now I mainly have three main screens for my iPad, which is the default, the work screen, and the study screen. Each focus mode has a different wallpaper assigned to it, and I think it's pretty cool. So let's dive into the focus mode that I typically use, the study focus mode. But before we get into that, a little word from our sponsor, AkiFlow. So if you guys never heard of AkiFlow, AkiFlow is essentially a calendar and a to-do list all in one. A good analogy is imagine it being a sort of premium to-do list calendar where you could have all the apps integrated all into one application, which is AkiFlow. The reason why I've been working with them for so long is because I have a lot of apps that I use and I kind of want everything all in one to-do list system. And I find that other apps don't have the features that AkiFlow has. So for example, the features that I really like about this application, and I know this is sponsored, but I genuinely do feel like they are very useful for me, is that AkiFlow has this way of integrating an Eisenhower matrix into our task system, or essentially having different priorities for your different tasks. And I find it really cool because I can set goals for the day, which is a good indicator for me to know that, okay, if I do this, then I'm pretty much done for the majority of the day. I also like that you can schedule your day based on your week or your month. So instead of just daily tasks, you can assign tasks for the whole week or for the whole month, which is, I don't know, very cool. And since I use Notion a lot, especially for content creation, I need to schedule my videos properly. It shows up here as well and it's synced, so I don't really have to do anything Thing, it's automatic. All the Notion pages that I've created will appear here. And I don't know, I just find that really cool. Their ritual feature is really cool as well, which is essentially a way for you to have a routine of you planning and de-planning your day. And recently they added a feature where you can add a timer to your tasks and this pop-up will show up, which is just really cool. You can drag it around so that while I'm working, I can look at the timer and I'm like, okay, I have this amount of time for this task. I better hurry up, which is also using the productive principle of the Parkinson's law, which states that work fills up the time allotted to it. So I don't know, the pressure of just seeing that timer makes me work faster. Anyway, I'll show you guys a little demo on how I plan my week and hopefully it will draw inspiration of how you can plan your week as well. So yeah, um, basically how I plan my week is I make sure to check my inbox. So this is pretty much all the available tasks that I can do. I know this looks very, very hectic, but trust me, this is like a long term thing. So for example, for vlog three, I need to edit this for this week's video. I know I've been uploading on that channel, but I'm going to edit. So I'm going to upload that on Monday. So I'm going to probably edit this on Sunday. So let me just put that here and I'm just going to check all tasks and my upcoming to see what I have for this week. So I'll just click days. And as you can see, vlog three is assigned for Sunday. I'm just going to change the deadline to March 16 on Sunday. And then I'll also be working on this video as well. So I'm just going to click that as goal. And that's another thing that I really love about AkiFlow is you can have these priorities. So yeah. Anyway, if you guys want to check out AkiFlow, just go to the link in the description below. If you guys use that link to sign up for AkiFlow, you'll also be helping my channel out as well. But yeah, thank you again AkiFlow for sponsoring this segment of the video, as well as feeding my family back to the video. All right, so turning on the study screen focus mode, you will notice a couple things will happen. Now, the most noticeable is the wallpaper change, and as you can see, it turns into a black blank wallpaper. Now, I added just a bit of an effect of like, hey, I'm going to work, so I'm just going to be focused on this task, and I'm not going to have any distracting wallpaper. I know that doesn't make any sense, but I'm just rolling with it. Another thing you'll notice is that the page actually changed to include a couple of widgets now. Like I said, I don't really like putting a lot of widgets, so we just have a couple here, starting with MB Clock. MB Clock is just a clock widget app that you can use. I've been mainly using this just to showcase the date and time on this really pretty minimalist widget. On the right we have is my Aggieflow widget. It's where it shows me my schedule and my calendar. 
And below it, we have is my Notion page, linking directly to my university dentistry page. It's pretty much where I track all of my university, everything from my assignments to my subjects, everything, I track it there. So, yeah. And finally, on the right side, we have is the chat GPT widget. Now, I know I never used it for cheating. However, it is so much better than freaking Google. Getting results and Googling it on ChatGPT rather than Google itself is just so helpful because it actually is somewhat like an optimized search engine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are the widgets that I have on my study focus screen. I don't really need anything else. I just found that this is what I need for my workflow. It's pretty simple. And if you guys are interested about my specific study routine, I actually posted a video about that. So you can check that out. All right, moving on to the next focus screen, we have is my creative screen. Now, this is mainly for my YouTube and everything else related to my side hustle. I do pretty much everything here. So we have a couple of widgets and a couple of apps. So let's just breeze them through. On the top left, we have is my email widget that I have from Gmail. Now, I do have to answer emails from time to time. So I do have this on my screen. It's very useful to keep me up to date with my email. Next, we have our two shortcuts for my Notion. The first page is Kodo, which is something that I'm gonna be keeping a secret for now. It is a sort of project that I'm working on, so stay tuned for that. But the next Notion page is my kind of book Notion page. This is where I manage most of my videos, my scheduling, my sponsorships and everything. Scripts, emails, files, everything on that page. So I have that direct shortcut. Beside it again, we have is my AccuFlow. Like I said, it's just bigger now and it shows my schedule even more. And below it are the apps that I use for my creative endeavors, starting with Figma. Figma is the main app that I use for UI design and general stuff. It's for the secret project I was talking about and I think you can kind of tell what I'm working on. Next up we have is Skillshare. Now I just have this because they recently sponsored me and they gave me a couple months for free. <laughs> so I'm just going to make the best out of it and I'm just going to be using their free trial. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> However, it's very useful when learning something new. It's just an easy app that I can use for online classes. The next app we have is Lightroom. This is the main photo editing app that I use and I just like it. And the good thing about it is that editing my photos is synced with my phone and my iPad. So I don't really have to transfer any files. I just have to open Lightroom itself. And the good thing is that the screen is so much bigger. So it's much better editing on my iPad. And finally, we have YouTube Studio. It's the app that I use when you're a YouTuber and it's just mainly to manage my YouTube channel. So stuff like analytics, comments, everything, it's pretty much all there. And yeah, that's pretty much for my work screen. I don't really have anything else. It's just a simple layout of apps and widgets. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I know this is a very, very limited and bare bone tour of my iPad, but I think that's what makes it so powerful is because I don't just use it for anything else. I have purposes that I have and I just have apps just for those purposes, no unnecessary applications, and it's just a perfect tool. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's iPad tour and it's April already, so I hope you're having a wonderful month. Don't forget to drink your water and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!